Nick wants to discuss top five NBA players of all time. Well, his oh, choice. Oh, is it choice. all time or is it current? All time. I said it to you already. See, I, wasn't pre- I wasn't prepared because I've been asking you for three oh, days that, what that's, the extra. Go, why, go look at the text it's, messages. You want me to put it up and put it on the like, phone, oh, on the screen? Oh, that's much like, why, why are we fighting in front of our viewers? Why do you have a, why do you have a rainbow flag on your phone? Wow. That's not you a didn't rainbow. You see my nephew? That's wow. not a rainbow wow. flag. That is his, uh, actually, where he gets his tumble and stumble on. It's just like a little pattern. It's not I'm just messing with you. So, um, so like I was going to say, um, I will, do you want me to go first? Of course, I, I, I didn't put it You got to think of mine now because, I mean, I, I, go I, ahead. You go yeah, first. You, you're, you're on a roll. I said top five all the time. So, boom, 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 at number five, coming in strong, Steph Curry, two-time. Unanimous MVP. Well, You're out of your fucking time. mind. You're out of your fucking mind. Well, go ahead. <laughs> Unanimous MVP. Um, MVP. Finals MVP. I mean NBA NBA Finals MVP. Steph Curry. Um, four-time champion. NBA leading scorer a couple times. I'm going with Steph Curry because nobody impacts the offensive end like Steph Curry. Nobody in league. History impacts the offensive end like Steph Curry. You know what you have to do? You have to guard him from half court. And you know what that does? That mess up your whole defense and he sets a pick on you and that has to extend your whole defense. You know what that does? That leaves Draymond open. You know what that does? That leaves Clay open. That makes people who aren't that great so much better because of Steph Curry. His offensive impact is second to none. He's up here. He's upper echelon when you come to offensive impact. Nobody else is touching him when you come to when you put it in that in that category, in that range. Steph Curry is number five. I don't care, Rudy. Rub your ball ahead. I'm I'm keeping it real and trill. Number four, Shaquille O'Neal. Yep. The most dominant big man ever in history. Oh, we could say Will. We could say Will. We could say Kareem. If they had to guard that man in this time, he will punish them. That was when you could throw elbows and knock a mother lover out and dunk on him on a drop step. And Shaq was the best at it. He had an amazing touch around the basket. Only thing we hoped for Shaq was to be in shape a little bit longer, and we could have seen his dominance a little bit longer. But for a nice 8 to 10 year stretch, nobody was messing with him. He was the top big man in history. Nobody could stop him. Dominant, dominant, dominant. You know what he did to Wilt? Put him in a basket. <laughs> Reverse uno skip, draw four on him. He can't do nothing with it. Done. At number three, Don 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 Don, Kobe Bean Bryant for me is number three. And I know we're going to get hate because we're going to say, Nick, you're not putting all the old people from Rudy Lifetime in there when he was five. But no, I'm, I'm not because they can't mess with these players of this generation or a little bit previous further back generation. I'm sorry, Bill Russell. You will get dominated. I'm sorry, Will. You will get dominated. Kareem. I'm not dominated. dominated. You you realize that Will was like 7 foot 2, 285 pounds, bro. Okay. Like he wasn't small. That (laughs) that would have killed him because did you see the little reverse fadeaway two-hand jump shot like this? That's not working. I I understand, but say you get killed. He's bigger than every dude in the NBA right now. At number two. (laughs) Y'all been waiting for this the whole time. Michael he's going to do something stupid. Jeffrey oh, fuck. Jordan stupid. is at number two. You know why? Because him and Kobe is the same. So if I would have had to put Jordan at one, I would have had to put Kobe at two. No, because you wouldn't. That's the most – that's preposterous. Because they are the same. I, I told player. you, he's a LeBron lover in the closet. I keep whoa, telling you. Whoa, whoa, Rudy, it's my turn. I'm speaking, not you. <laughs> so I'm speaking, it's my turn. Yeah, Kobe. Bean Bryant would be number three and Jordan is two because they're the same player. I would have had to put I would have had to put Kobe at two if I put Jordan at one. I would have had to put guess who at number three? The person that's at number one, LeBron James. LeBron James is at number one. You know why? Because he could do everything. He's been doing it for a longer amount of time at a higher pace than anybody else for twenty years. He didn't go take a break in nineteen ninety. Three, because he had to take a break. He played the whole time. You know why? They were like, oh, he won a three-peat, another three-peat. You know why? Because he took time off. He was able to recuperate his body. 
everybody else who's playing this long and have to keep going and going and going, you would have eventually you would eventually lose. No way you're winning six in a row or eight in a row, which would it would have been you would have had to win eight in a row for him to get well the little hype that we talk about him for winning six in a row. Y'all would be like, Oh, he need to beat Houston and Houston. I don't know if he beat Houston twice. Hmm. Maybe not. But LeBron did something amazing. He came back three against one against one of the best teams in NBA history, if not the best team in NBA history. The second best team in NBA history because the Golden State Warriors the next year when they got Kevin Durant, I don't care what you say, that was the best team in NBA history. They had Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond with a lot of role players that were amazing. So my list would be LeBron James there who did what nobody else thought he could do, come back from 3-1, and he carried, he won four championships. And he did in a day and age where it's tougher than before because the talent is better, Rudy, because Pat Beverly back in the 1990s would be Gary Payton Jr. He'll be the mitten. We'll call him the mitten. Patrick Beverly in 1990 is called the mitten. But now in this day and age, he is an eight and five player, eight and four player. But back then in 1990s, when the talent was not as good as now, when you could pull up from three and you just didn't have one person who could score, and you're going to say, oh, the defense nowadays is so much softer. No, it's not. It's because the, the floor is wide open and everybody can shoot. So, you know, with guarding one-on-one is so much harder than back then because – You literally just – you just contradicted yourself. How? Go on. How? Go ahead. How? How? Go ahead. How? Because defense nowadays is so much harder you just than con- – You just contradicted yourself. How? You want to know why it's spread- – if, if Shaq was in the league today, you just said Shaq was unstoppable. Mm-hmm. If he was in the league today, he would average 50 points a game because nobody could guard him. And you know all that three-point shooter you just talked about? Yeah. One of them three-point shooters yeah. would have to guard him, the about, and he'd fuck everybody out with today's rules. The thing about with Shaq, the L.A. Shaq that we'll put in screen and rolls all day and make him have to come out there and guard us too? Yeah. Shaq was MVP his first year with the Heat, if you don't recall. But he got screwed by Steve Nash. You remember that, right? You were here. Uh, I wouldn't say MVP that year. He was he did good. He, he finished second behind Steve yeah, Nash, Steve Nick. Steve Nash was still did, had a better year. Steve Nash orchestrated that whole thing. He, he, what 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 are you gonna say? What 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 Steve? This, the, all the Steve Nash hate that he gets. Steve Nash really orchestrated that thing back then. He did what he was supposed to do. He made it go over there in Phoenix. They didn't get there because of. Some unfortunate things. Well, let's say our player got suspended here and there against the Spurs. That's some things that happened to the Suns. They were they might have made the championship one of those years. It was unfortunate for those guys. Yeah, they, yeah, they didn't. They were amazing. They were an amazing team. They just didn't win the game that they needed to win. But they were great. Shaq did good. They never made the fi- they never made the finals. What are you talking about? They didn't make the finals. They didn't make the finals because of some circumstances. It wasn't just because they were not good, Rudy. We're not. You didn't good. say they weren't good. What? No, I didn't say they were not good. Okay. I didn't say that. Okay. But you're sitting here saying that Steve Nash deserved the MVP over I'm, Shaq. I'm telling you, Man, I'm you're telling high. You that I'm telling you that LeBron dealt with scrutiny that that Michael Jordan didn't do. <sighs> And now it's playing this okay. day and age where you have Twitter, Instagram, people on you. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for you when you say, oh, he's a good husband and a good father and a good role model, whatever. Get I, the fuck I could out care of less here. about that because that's not oh my, my business. Because, you know, oh we're married God. with children today, but that's not the problem. We're worrying about LeBron mm-hmm. James and him being yeah. number one. Because yeah, all he's, the master of, he's the master of losing in the finals, I know. Oh, but uh, he's are, not you done, there. Are, you, are you done yet? Are you done win. yet? Everybody can't win because Jordan had the You're right. Team. You're right, they can't. Team. You're right. Nobody else, had, nobody else had a top five, top ten player, two top ten players on their team. Name another team that had two top ten players okay. on their team. Please. What? Who had top, two top ten players? That had two top ten players on their team back then, Rudy. Back then, Utah had Carl Malone and John Stockton. You told me John Stockton wasn't a top no, ten he's player. Not a top. You also, did, you also, did, you also told me that John Stockton is sorry. So no, I'll, I'll, never, I, on. I, I, he's sorry. He could, he couldn't do. He Pat Beverly would be better than him. Get whoa, the fuck out of here. You're gonna come on this. Get the, the fuck out of here. Said, I never. Said you that. said Pat Beverly would be better than him. No, I never. You, said I, don't you, I don't even know if you're trolling me anymore I with this bullshit said, on Pat Beverly, said, or you're really I, serious. I never said Pat Beverly would be better than John Stockton. John Stockton was a top ten player in the league when he was in the league with Carl Malone. He was a first starter every year in the All-Star team, pretty much. Come on, man. Okay, come on. You just told me that that's top that 10. MVP don't matter. So how are we going to say I didn't, I didn't say it didn't matter. What I, said, I, said, I said Shaq should have won the MVP. What are you talking about? Give me your 